Hello, this video is about the Goring Gap and this is a case study in the rivers topic within Edexcel A GCSE. First of all, let's recap our knowledge on chalk landscapes. Um, so, as we know, chalk is a soft rock um, and anyone who has used a piece of chalk to write on a blackboard will know that you can break chalk quite easily, so it's a soft rock. Here we have an image of a chalk landscape and we know that this is a chalk landscape because we can see these white areas um, where the chalk is showing through the uh, grassland. This chalk landscape has been eroded by a river. So because chalk is so uh, soft, it can be easily eroded and a river has carved through a valley here in the chalk. This river has since been replaced by a road in this example, but this landform was originally formed by a river. So we know that chalk is a soft rock and it's easily carved by water. Okay, what is the Goring Gap? So the Goring Gap is a gap that has been carved by a river um, in some chalk hills. So here is a basic map of the Goring Gap. On this side to the west we have chalk hills which are called the North Wessex Downs and to the east we have chalk hills which are called the Chilterns. Now the River Thames has carved its way through the soft rock, through the chalk and has formed a valley or a gap in the chalk hills and this gap is called the Goring Gap because there is a large village called Goring situated in this area. Okay, here is a bird's eye view or a satellite image of the Goring Gap. So on this side, we have chalk hills and on this side, we have chalk hills. And here we have the river flowing through the middle, also a railway line and the large village of Goring here. This is on flat land in between the two sets of chalk hills. It has been carved by the river. Okay, so where is the Goring Gap? It is in the south of England. And as we saw the river going through the Goring Gap is the River Thames, so the same river that flows through London. So here we can locate the River Thames in the south of the UK. Let's zoom in. Um, this map shows the source of the river in Gloucestershire in a place called Kemble and the mouth of the river to the east of London, as we know. And Goring, the Goring Gap is here, about a third of the way along the river between the towns of Oxford and Reading. And so therefore we know that the Goring Gap is in the middle course of the river. Let's do zoom in a bit more. Uh, and again, we can see the Goring Gap is in the middle course of the river between the towns of Oxford and Reading. Okay, so how did the Goring Gap actually form? Firstly, before the last ice age, the course of the River Thames was further north than it is today. So this map shows that the River Thames was actually running to the north of London. London is here. Um, and it emptied into the sea. Its mouth was in Norfolk, on the Norfolk coast. So it wasn't where it is today. It was on the Norfolk coast. However, then the ice age happened. So during the Ice Age, glaciers advanced from the north, pushing the River Thames to the south. So a glacier, as we know, is a large kind of river of ice uh, that moves very, very slowly along the land. So the red arrow and the red line shows the glaciers which moved southwards. And as they did, they pushed the River Thames towards the south as well, changing the course of the River Thames. Okay, reading together. At the end of the Ice Age, glaciers melted and forced large amounts of water into the Thames. 
The chalk rock was easy to erode, so the expanding river carved a path through it, forming the Goring Gap. Okay, so at the end of the Ice Age, the glaciers melted and the river was inundated and overwhelmed with water. So the wa there wasn't enough room in the channel for all of the water, so it had to find another place to go um, and to form a, a wider channel. So the chalk hills were very soft and easy for it to erode a path through, so that's what it did. So here's a picture of a river that has eroded through some hills. So this is what it could have looked like then. Um, here's a representation. So this orange um, bit is the chalk hills. And we can see that the river has now changed its path and it's running through those chalk hills and then goes on to London and then empties out into the sea. Um, so as a recap, first of all, the ice comes down from the north and pushes the river to the south. And secondly, the, um, the melt water from the melted ice overwhelms the river and it finds a new course, it, it carves a new course through the chalk rock. Okay, so going back to the Goring Gap, here's a photo of the Goring Gap. So what are the physical features that we can see in this photo? I'd like you to pause the video and write down at least three physical features. Okay, first of all, the chalk hills. So the person taking this photo was stood on a chalk hill and you can see there are chalk hills on the other side as well. And they have a steep gradient. They have a steep gradient where they have been carved out by the ice and by the river. We can also see the flat valley. So the flat valley, has been carved by the river. And we can also see uh, meanders in the river. So these curves in the river that we get in the middle course of the river. So they're a typical feature of a middle course of the river. Okay, how does this look on an Ordnance Survey map? Um, so here we have an OS map of the Goring Gap. So the photos in the top right corner for you and there's an icon here uh, that shows where the photo was taken from point, um, pointing the camera in the direction of north west. Um, so we have the small, uh, the large village of Goring here and we have the flat valley, flat river, the river valley and the hills on either side. So I'd like you to pause the video and think about physical features that we can see here. Okay, so first of all, we have areas of a steep gradient, so the hills. And we know this because the contour lines in these areas are close together, steep gradient. We have the flat valley. And we know this because the contour lines here are far apart. So we can see that this contour line is far away from this one which is even further away from this one. And compare this to the contour lines over here, which are very close together. We can also see a meander or a bend in the river. Okay, so let's test our knowledge. Um, the Goring Gap was formed by, I'd like you to pause the video, and decide which of these is correct. Okay, so B is correct. The, for, the Goring Gap was formed by ice, glaciers, and uh, river erosion. It was not formed by wave erosion. It's not at the coast. Physical features of the Goring Gap include, I'd like you to pause the video, Okay, the answer is A. Physical features include uh, steep valley sides and meanders. Okay, not waterfalls. Waterfalls are found in the upper course and we are dealing with the, low, the middle course. Okay, let's think about human influence on the Goring Gap. Um, the Goring Gap has always been a vital crossing over the River Thames 
and there is evidence of human activity from 10,000 years ago. So archaeologists have found uh, these flint spearheads and also the bones of animals that people would have eaten, including a mammoth. This is a mammoth jaw that was found 30 years ago by someone who was swimming in the River Thames. They put their foot on it, wondered what it was, and it turned out to be a mammoth jaw. Okay. Secondly, the Goring Gap is a key transport route between London and Bristol. So it has the river, which was the original way that people uh, transported goods from town to town. Um, it now has the railway, uh, which was built in the 1800s because of the nice flat land. Um, and it's also at an intersection or a junction or a coming an area where the route are coming together um, an intersection of trading routes, uh, roads and paths. So we can see on the map here that here we have many roads coming together in junctions. So it's an intersection of these roads, an interse intersection or joining together of these trading routes. And one of these is a very ancient pathway that people used to walk along to trade called the Ridgeway. Lastly, um, the Goring Gap uh, is quite unique in that underneath it has um, a large aquifer, a large aquifer which is an area or, uh, that stores water, a natural source of groundwater. And there are seven boreholes. Now a borehole is shown in this diagram here and it is a mechanism for um, getting water from an aquifer. So basically it pumps water up from the aquifer into pipes um, and then the water is pumped along pipes to its destination. And this is a photograph of one of the uh, boreholes in the Goring Gap. Now the borehole is obviously underneath the ground. This is all you can see from the top. Um, but there are seven of these in the Goring Gap. Um, and this is the largest groundwater abstraction project in Europe. So this is the largest um, attempt for people to be getting water out of the ground in Europe. So it's really significant. Um, enough water to fill 20 Olympic sized swimming pools is pumped every day. And it supplies Oxford, which is 300,000 people. That's a lot of water being pumped out of the ground every day in the Goring Gap. Okay, so let's have a look at our OS map. So the human features um, of the Goring Gap that we can see on the OS map, well, pause the video and have a look. Okay, so uh, intersection of roads, really important human feature. The railway, and as we know, the red circle is a railway station and water abstraction. Now it's not shown on this map that that is the area where those water abstraction boreholes are located. So translating that onto the photo, the railway, uh, the road we can't see because of the trees, but there is the road junction just there and the water abstraction we can't really see either because it's well camouflaged in the landscape. Um, but that is there. And an interesting thing about uh, the railway particularly is you can see these uh, gantries going over the top of the railway. There's a very recent addition. Um, that is where they electrified the railway um, ready for HS2. And this is a really controversial thing in the area at the time um, because many people thought that this sort of ruined the landscape. This is a, what's called an area of outstanding natural beauty. So um, it's been designated as one of the most beautiful areas of the UK. Um, and many, many people thought that this, these gantries are very ugly. Um, and so there was a campaign against this at the time, but obviously it did go ahead. Okay, so let's think about how we would answer exam questions about the Goring Gap. Quite often, a question might ask you about the significance of a place that you have studied. 
Okay, so what is the significance of the location of the Goring Gap? The significance means the importance. Why is it important? So we can talk about um, human factors. So it's significant um, because of transport. It's the intersection of major trading routes. Uh, we have the railway, we have the river. So all these are uh, ways that, um, that we transport things. Um, it's significant because of water abstraction. So it's the largest water abstraction project in Europe. Uh, there are seven boreholes in the Chalky Rock, which allow water to be extracted for 300,000 people in Oxford. And it's significant because it was formed by ice. It was formed when the glaciers forced the River Thames southwards. Okay, so not, so it's quite unique in that way. So if you are asked to talk about the significance of a place, um, these are the kind of things that make this place important. Okay. Let's have a look at an exam question. I'd like you to pause the video and read the exam question. Okay, you have studied a named distinctive river landscape. Assess the factors that have influenced how it has changed over time. Eight marks. Okay, so distinctive river landscape. So our case study, for rivers is the Goring Gap. So immediately it's asking you about a river landscape so you should know that's the Goring Gap. And this is an assess question, an assess question. So we have to assess the factors that have made the Goring Gap change over time. So in an assess question, we weigh up which factor is the most or the least important and then give an overall judgment. So thinking about what we've just been through, I'd like you to pause the video and think about the different factors that we could talk about in this answer. Now there are human factors and there are physical factors. So I'd like you to come up with at least two human and two physical factors. Okay, so you should have two human and two hum physical factors at least. So here we go. Human factors could be uh, or are transport, so the river, the railway, the road, intersection, and water abstraction. Physical factors are the chalk geology of the area, so the soft rock that was easily carved out, the glaciers, and the river. So we've got our human factors and our physical factors. So we could write one paragraph about human and one paragraph about physical. Okay. So let's have a look at the structure of our writing. So as we know, we structure an assess answer using peak, peak C, uh, and peak stands for point, evidence, explain, counter or compare. And we do that twice, so we have two paragraphs using peak, peak C, and then we have our conclusion in which we state which factor we think is the most important. So we're gonna choose one physical factor and one human factor uh, to compare against each other, and then we are gonna write our conclusion. Okay, so we're going to start a paragraph, our first paragraph, um, and we're going to write about the physical factor first. The physical factor we are choosing is the geology, or the fact that the landscape there is chalk, is chalk rock, so it's soft. Okay, so let's think about our paragraph, and we're going to use PEEC. So, uh, one physical factor that has influenced the gap river landscape is geology. Okay, so that's our point. We've made our point. We're going to be talking about geology um, and the fact that 
the rock is made from chalk. Um, the rocks in the area are made from chalk, which is a soft sedimentary So there's our, our evidence. So we know um, that the, chalk, the, rock, the rock is made from chalk. Okay, so now we need to explain why this is an important and influential factor. Uh, so when the glaciers melted at the end of the age, A large amount of meltwater overwhelmed the river and forced it to find a new course. It was able to erode a path through the soft chalk rock forming the flooring okay so there's our explanation we've explained why the the fact that the area is chalk is important so now we need to add our counter or our comparison um, so let's say however The effects on the chalk are very long term and therefore not fast enough to be significant today. Okay. So we're saying that the erosion erosional effects on the chalk landscape uh, take place over a very long period of time, so are not really significant to us today. Um, so that is our kind of counter argument. Okay, so I'd like you now to pause the video and have a go at the second paragraph yourself. So you're choosing a human factor this time, and you're writing your paragraph using the format PEEC. Okay, so here is uh, an example of the second paragraph. I would like you to pause the video and annotate your own answer or improve your own answer in green pen. Okay, so this example has chosen transport as the point. The evidence it's given is that the Great Western Railway was built um, and it's oh, Goring is at the intersection of ancient pathways. It's then explained that talking about how the river used to be the way that goods were transported but then the Flat Valley has allowed railways and roads to be built um, and it has um, said that the building of roads and railways can have a negative effect on the environment as the counter argument. Okay, so now we need to add our conclusion. So the conclusion needs to decide which one of these is the most important. Um, so here is a conclusion. Um, the most important factor influencing the Goring Gap over time is transport. This is because it's a current issue that is important for the economy but also needs to be managed properly to protect the environment. Um, so this conclusion is saying that transport is more important than the chalk geology because this is the current issue, it's something that's happening today, it's something that um, can be influenced today. Um, you could argue that the chalk geology is more important, there's no wrong or right answer, 
it's up to you to make your argument. Okay, I'd like you to end the video now um, and you can also improve this conclusion before you stop. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Bye.